Welcome to another Power in the Word message presented by Pastor Dr. Gerald Parker Sr. Also join us for our noonday Nothing But the Word Bible study starting at 12 noon each Wednesday. Brought to you by Pilgrim Progress Missionary Baptist Church Ministries located at 1301 North Magnolia Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Where we say, let's do it God's way. The Matthew, the first chapter, verse 21 and 23, it says this, and she shall bring forth a son All right. mm-hmm. and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. Yeah. Now all this was done prophet saying behold a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with itself. Now I'm going to ask you to go to the Gospel of St. Luke. Thank you, Lord. The Gospel of St. Luke, the 23rd chapter and the 43rd verse. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your word. And in St. Luke, and Jesus said unto him, Verily I say, and just for a few minutes, I want to talk about as we looked at Matthew 1 and then we look, looked at use this, this subject. This subject came to me while I was preparing this message and I know that we are subject minded people and the subject for today is simply this to the utmost Jesus saves. All right. Before we go any further I want to give God the total praise and glory for sending Jesus Christ to this world. God became a baby and then that baby matured and died on the cross for our sins and rose early Sunday morning. And without a doubt, uh, to the utmost, Jesus saves. I, 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 I was trying to find out the definition for utmost. Since the subject is to the utmost Jesus saves, it would be beneficial, it would be helpful if we found out what utmost means. All right. We don't use that word utmost very often. And so I had to look up uh, in the dictionary and found out that when you do something to the utmost, you spend extreme energy. When you do something to the utmost, you do it to the highest degree. When you do something to the utmost, you do it with all of your ability. When you do something to the utmost, you do it with your greatest effort. When you do something to the utmost, you, uh, you do all you can while you can. When you do something to the utmost, you give your maximum best. Yeah, and, and, and the point that I'm trying to say today is Jesus saves to the utmost. No doubt about that. He saves to, so now what does save mean? Whenever you are saved, you are released from danger. Or another word for saved is you are delivered and set free. And I've come to tell you here today uh, that uh, as we think about Christmas, as we think about the advent of Jesus Christ, you can't help but to realize that Christmas reminds us of this fact that to the utmost, Jesus saves. Now, you're wondering, I know you're wondering, why would I go 
from Matthew, the first chapter, and then move over to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter. It's for a reason. Because in Matthew, the first chapter, we hear the angel talking to Joseph about what you will call this baby. You will call this baby Jesus because he'll save the world from their sins. Then when you go over to St. Luther 23rd chapter, Jesus is no longer a baby. He's hanging on the cross now, telling a sinner, yeah, that today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Right. Now, the question is this, look at me, the question is simply this, why do you want, on during Christmas time, to combine uh, the crib of Jesus with the cross of Jesus? I, I've come to tell you, we cannot celebrate the crib of Jesus without celebrating the cross of Jesus. Now, I mean, the, the crib represents his birth, but the cross represents his death. But have you ever thought what took place between the crib of Jesus and the cross of Jesus? Between the, the crib and the cross, he matured into a man. Between the crib and the cross, he made disciples. Between the crib and the cross, he performed miracles. Between the crib and the cross, he had dynamic messages. Uh, between the crib and the cross, uh, he, he healed the blinded man's eyes. Between the crib and the cross, he fed 5,000. Between the crib and the cross, he raised Lazarus from the grave. Between the crib and the cross, he declared that he was the, the way, the truth, and the life. Thank God what happened between the crib and the cross. But this morning, we find ourselves on the cross. We now find ourselves, yeah, at Calvary. Everybody say Calvary. And we're with Jesus, yeah, on the cross. Now, a few days ago, we talked about how that Jesus was on his way to Calvary, and they had to stop a, a black man by the name of Simon. Now, we cannot really prove uh, that Simon was black, uh, but he was from a, a northern uh, uh, town there in Africa uh, uh, called Serene. And so it's a possibility that he was a black man, but really it doesn't matter whether he was black, white, red, or green. He, he carried the cross of Jesus. And see, it, it, we, we get so caught up in color, we got to realize, I can ask you a question, what's the color of a soul? We get so caught up in, 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 in skin, but Jesus didn't come here for skin, he came here for sin. We get so caught up in race, he didn't come here for race, he came here for grace. We, we, we get caught up in the outward things. Y'all get what I'm saying here? And so now we find Jesus on the cross. But there's one thing I didn't tell you all a few weeks ago. While Jesus was walking, yeah, to Calvary, the scripture tells us, thank God, in St. Luke, uh, the 20th, in St. Luke, the 23rd chapter, and the 32nd verse, it says, and there was also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. Now, here we go. Stay with me now. While he was on his way to Calvary to be executed, Luke tells us that there were two other men that was walking with him also to be executed. Luke called them malefactors, which means evil workers. Yeah, yeah. Could, could you imagine Jesus who had, was innocent, was going to the cross? But the scripture says that there were two other men walking with Jesus, going to Calvary to be executed, to be put to death. Now, I want you to get this now. If you would notice, if you would read the Gospel of St. Mark and the Gospel of St. Luke, you would read where they led Jesus. 
You read where they put Jesus. You read where they mocked Jesus. It's almost like Jesus was in the control of anything. They led Jesus. They took clothes off of Jesus. They scourged Jesus. They put him on the cross. It's almost like he was in control of anything. But can I tell you right now, although it looked like that, they, that he was not in control, God was in control. Right. Yes, and now we find Jesus on the cross. In St. Luke, the 23rd chapter, verse 33, and every time I get to this passage, just, it just tears me up. It says, and when they were come to the place, they who? Well, this all is, they encompasses a lot of people. They could very well be the crowd that followed Jesus and those men to the cross. They could very well mean Simon and the Roman soldiers, but the they here uh, represents the Roman soldiers. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, right. there's something special about Calvary. Uh, in the Latin, it's cranean, it means the place of the skull. And there they crucified him. And the scripture says, not only did they crucify Jesus, but they also crucified the malefactors as well. Could you imagine? And, and what made this so bad, uh, there were three crosses there on Calvary. There was one malefactor was on his left side, and the other evil worker was on his right side. And guess who was in the middle? The middle cross really made the difference. Jesus was in the middle. And the reason why they would crucify a person in the middle, because usually this person would be guilty of the most, the most terrible, the most terrible offense. And so when people would see that man in the middle, they would think he did the worst crime. But the good news is, guess what? When Jesus was hanging on the cross between those two thieves, guess what happened? It was prophesied in Isaiah 53 and 12, that he would be hanging on the cross and that there would be two transgressors, two evil workers, one on the left side and one on the right side. He was on the cross dying for your sins and mine, hanging there, nails in his hands and nails in his feet and the crown around his head. And, and, and crucifixion was so terrible. It was so terrible. It was, it, it was so terrible because he had been beaten all morning long uh, with the scourges and now his back was open with wounds. He had this crown of thorns on his head and now here they are. He had nails in his hands, nails in his feet. And what made crucifixion so terrible was, uh, was the bugs and the insects. What would happen is while they were hanging on the cross, you You'd see birds eating on the flesh. You'd see uh, 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 ants and flies going into the wounds. And what made crucifixion so terrible was they were crucified buck naked. Uh, you, you, see, you see these pictures of Jesus hanging on the cross. And you'll see with a nice little, little napkin around his waist and all that. But the the, the truth of the matter is, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, he was hanging there between heaven and earth with no clothes on. And beneath the cross were the Roman soldiers playing dice to see who would win his clothes. I want y'all to see this picture. There's nothing, there's nothing beautiful about this. He was suffering for you and suffering for me. Not only did he suffer the pain of the cross, but he suffered the humiliation there on the cross. While he was hanging there, the scripture tells us, uh, praise God, uh, in verse 35, it said, the people stood beholding him. Could you imagine, can't you see them now? The crowd is there and they're just beholding. They're, they're, they are 
spectators. They are observing him being crucified. But then the scripture also said the rulers also with them derided him. Now, I see three verbs here. Uh, the uh, rulers derided him. The soldiers mocked him, and, and that word deride and that word mock, it means to dehumanize. It means to laugh at. It means to poke fun. It means to say hurtful words. So while he was hanging between heaven and earth for your sins and mine, they hurled insults at him. They, 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 they downed him. They talked about him. And whoever told you that sticks and stones may hurt my bones, but words will never hurt. Can I tell you here today before I go, words do hurt. I said, words do hurt. Amen. Words are, are more terrible than bites. Words, words are more terrible than hits. Words hurt because when you hit with a fist, you simply hit your outside, but words go into your soul. Words touch your consciousness, and they hurl, they hurl defa defaming words at Jesus. They said terrible things, laughed at him, laughed at him. If you be the Christ, if you be who you say you are, come down. I, I, I can't, can't you see? The religious leaders talked about him, said if you be the son of God, you ought to come down and save yourself. The soldiers uh, made fun of him, and they gave him vinegar, but he didn't take it. They said, if you be the son of God, come down and save yourself. But that's not it. That's not it, y'all. The two criminals who were hanging next to Jesus, one on the left, one on the right, they both, they both hurled insults at Jesus. I want y'all to see this picture. Thank God for the crib, but let all see the cross. And while he was hanging on the cross, there was conversation going on, and then there was conversion. While he was hanging on the cross, there was communication, and then there was conversion. When they crucified him, he said these words to his father. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That was, he was communicating with his father. And there's a lesson for us here today. Whatever you down and out, whatever you in trouble, don't hesitate to call on your father. Amen. Now, if you are a believer, you have a, a heavenly father. Thank God for our heavenly father. He called on his heavenly father, but not only did he communicate with his father, he also communicated with one of the sinners that were there on the cross. To the utmost, Jesus save. Now, I, I got to say this before I, before I go into uh, what the, uh, one of the people said to him, uh, verse 39, but before I go any further, in Matthew, the 27th chapter, verse 44, it tells us that both of the criminals, both of the malefactors railed at Jesus. Both of them cursed him. Both of them said demeaning words. Both of them said shameful words. Both of them said hurtful words to him. But while they were on that cross, one of those evil workers had a change of heart. It was amazing uh, what took place. I, I, Lord, help me to Lord, help me to recreate this so that people can actually see it. And in verse 39, it says, and one of the malefactors, and malefactor, malefactor means evil worker. One of the malefactors, which was hanging on the cross, railed at Jesus. They jeered at you. Hey, if you be Christ, save yourself and us too. Can't you see him? Here he was dying. Here he was in pain. Here he was hanging on the cross just like Jesus. But he had the nerve to say, hey, if you, if you be who you say you are, if you be who you say you are, if you be the Christ, if you be the Messiah, save yourself and save us. Can't you see that? That, that was terrible. If, now, the problem was this brother would never be saved because he said, if. When it comes to Jesus Christ, there are no ifs. He is Christ. He is the Savior. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. 
He is the mediator between man and God. He is Emmanuel, all oh God. Yeah, I, I come, there's no if, but then he, he said, if you be who say you are, save yourself and us. That brother wasn't concerned about spiritual salvation. He wanted Jesus to do something to, to save him from his physical ailments. And you know, just pretty much like us today, you'd be going through some stuff and you're hurting. And a lot of times we'll go to God asking him to release us from our suffering and pain to, to promise that if you, if you deliver me from this, I promise you I'll stop doing whatever I was doing. You know what happened many times? As soon as he delivered you from that pain and suffering, we have a tendency to go back to do what we always did. That, and the other, in verse 40, the other one looked over. I don't know which side he was on. I like to think he was on the right side of Jesus. And he looked over to the other thief and said, hey, don't you fear God? Don't you fear God? Seeing that we are in the same condition, he's be hanging, but we're hanging. And then he said something that touched my heart. He said, we indeed justly, we deserve to be hanging on the cross. We receive the reward of our deeds, but this man, we deserve what we've done. We, we're thieves, we're robbers, we're murderers. We've been condemned. But this man, the one that's in the middle here, he's done nothing amiss. He's done no wrong. Now the question is, how did that brother know that? I, I Somehow the way, at that point, what happened was, I see some repentance going on. You see, when you repent, you stop doing what you were doing and turn to God. And, and, that, and so that, that, that sinner that was rebuking Jesus, that sinner that was, that was, that was reviling Jesus, that sinner uh, that was d d disdaining Jesus, all of a sudden he changed and told that other fella, leave him alone. I find no thought in him. But then he, this is it. This is it, y'all. Not only did he repent, but that miracle took place there on Calvary. He was dying. Jesus was dying. The other thief was dying. But if you look there, praise God, and this just tells me up in verse 42. He stopped talking to the other thief. Then he looked at Jesus. Y'all don't see it. Now they're hanging on the cross. They're hanging on the cross and they're hanging there. And he was dying. And I want to let you know that since they was hanging on the cross, every time they would breathe or take a breath or speak, it was pressure on his lungs, and so to say words would be would, would he would have to labor for his for his for his words. But he looked to Jesus and said these words, "Lord, I thank you." He said, "Lord." He called him Lord. He called him Lord. He called him the Greek word kyrios. He called him Master. He called him the one who's really in charge. He had to have faith to call Jesus Lord because Jesus had a crown around his head. His back had been beaten down to the nerves. He was hanging on the cross. His body was so terribly beaten until you could hardly recognize him. But somewhere or somehow that thief recognized that this man was not an ordinary man. This man is the Lord. He had more theology than the disciples. No one had called Jesus Lord before he got on the cross. So he saw something. He, he looked beyond the nails. He looked beyond the cross. He looked beyond, yeah, the crown on his head. And he said, Lord. Everybody say, Lord. Lord. He said, Lord. He said, now I realize you are Lord. Now, what would, what would make him call Jesus Lord? He said, let me tell you something. When I want you to do something for me, I want you to remember me. Yeah. Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know, yeah, I, 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 it still amazed me. How did he know that Jesus was Lord? 
How do you know that Jesus had another kingdom not made of this world? I'll tell you how he found out. He observed the master. He saw him as he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He noticed the silence of the master. And somewhere, somehow, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, he realized that Jesus was not an ordinary man. He said, Lord, when you get into your kingdom, remember me. I don't know how y'all feel about that. He said, I know you got another kingdom. And I know you're getting ready to die. But somehow I believe that when you die, you're going to live again. And when you get into your kingdom, I want you to remember me. I want you to have me on your mind. I noticed he didn't say, uh, when you get in your kingdom, release me or save me. He said, I just want you to remember me. Because if you remember me, you will have mercy on me. If you remember me, you will have grace on me. I give God the glory. and pray. He said, Lord... When you get in your kingdom, remember me. Now, I got happy because I found out, I don't know if you've ever, ever experienced this, but have you ever asked the Lord for one thing and he gave you more than what you asked for? Yes, sir, Doc. He said, Lord, when you get in your kingdom, remember me. I'm so glad. I'm rejoicing today because Jesus heard his prayer. Yes, sir. And when you cry to the Lord, he will hear your prayer. And I can hear the Lord tells this brother, and Jesus said unto him, he said, verily. While he was hanging on the cross, he said, verily. And that word verily means amen. That word verily means this, what I'm getting ready to tell you is the truth. He said, not only am I going to remember you, but this day, I said, this day, yeah, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Yeah, I don't know how y'all feel about that. That's, 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 that's something to the utmost. Jesus saved. He said, let me tell you the truth. Yeah, this day, not tomorrow, not next week, but this day, right now. You'll be with me in paradise. Now, somebody asked the question, where is paradise? What is paradise? I don't know what paradise is. I don't know where paradise is. Some people say it's heaven, but can I tell you what paradise is? Anywhere where Jesus is. Amen. When we make it in, it's going to be, going to be, it's going to be everybody say grace. Everybody say grace. grace. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the cross. But thank God for grace. He brought us this far by grace. He gave him grace. He gave him mercy. And that's how we're going to make it in. And one day, I don't know how y'all feel about it, I want to see Jesus for myself. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but if you make it in, it's going to be because of God's grace and mercy. To the utmost, Jesus saves.